Red evening. It's better than work. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a member. Let's begin. We have a guest on Halloween. Rob and Robert, have you been? Very Go good. for it, Robert. Oh, well, thank you for having me, guys. Always good to be here. No problem at all. No problem at all. I mean, you and I met before on the, that was Rolo show in the first case, I believe. I believe so. I believe so. I truly hope he does more of those. Like I mentioned, like he just goes full PewDiePie where it's like, hey, I have a big YouTube channel and I can do what I want. Here's Warhammer, kids. And mm -hmm. Here's where I go fishing. But he won't. Here's where I ride my sleds. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that more of that's needed especially within the circles that Rolo is best known for. I hate to use that friggin' term, Manosphere. I, I like the idea of the Manosphere as being this gay bar where Aaron works. That works a lot better for me than what it is. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it just that's how it is. But, uh, yeah, so I, I'd love to see Rolo doing more of that. I know he and Vince have talked about doing something like that and maybe going back and forth between channels and such, but what ultimately gets done and when i i can't say mm, but true. Uh, but no true. i i think that's cool because i mean granted yes there are a lot of shows on youtube where you know guys are talking about pop culture and gaming and miniatures and whatever but i think the guys that we know that run in the groups that we do or in the case of uh rob spends a week at the beach you know, drinking, smoking cigars, and killing things with axes. And, uh, you know, uh, I think that our group kind of brings a unique perspective to things, um, especially some, especially when they're in the mood to just kind of kind of cut through the BS about stuff and say, look, this is this is what it is and what I like and what I don't like and why. Mm -hmm. and so on. Um, what what's weird though because like you mentioned how all of this started out i mean rob is an ordinary truck driver that is nothing against truck drivers my <laughs> rob you, is not an ordinary anything let's, he let's, is let's he is the best at out. what he does he is the yes. best at what he does <laughs> and and what he does isn't always nice so yes yeah. i mean i work at customer service and next to that i'm a personal trainer but i still need the normal job before mm -hmm. well i can actually live off the training stuff by the way i do coaching now link is in the chat <laughs> ask dante dante is here and uh mpc and john watts but okay mm -hmm. and of course the guys who come and train here but like i still need a normal job on the side to well do what i want to do you robert just mentioned your profession before we went on like just normal life just normal life no kick-ass mansions in eastern europe or in brazil or whatever driving 2000 supercars but all of a sudden now it's like hey if you don't have this or are this tall or look like this you're not gonna make it where it's like how the hell did we get into this like it's not like every girl is a 10 out of 10 you know like they're still like average looking people around it's not the extremes yet here the people are dealing in absolutes. Well, I, from my own personal experiences, not to say that I've ever had a 10, I, I'm not boasting like that. I'm not kind of producing those. That's not what I'm saying. But some of the prettier girls I've been with have been some of the most boring, boring in the sack, boring over coffee, boring wherever. Some of the girls that are the more average, you know, mm -hmm. they appreciated you. They, <laughs> they, they made sure you knew that you were appreciated. That genuine desire that can't be negotiated was mm -hmm. there. When the girl drives from somewhere in the Chicago suburbs down to the radio station you're working at somewhere in a different market in a different state mm -hmm. because she wants to show her oral skills 
to the radio guy, <laughs> that's genuine desire. Mm -hmm. It just is. Mm -hmm. And and that's true if it's the waitress at the bar that you're like, you know, flirting with and slips you her number with the receipt or whatever. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. So, uh, and, well, and let's face it, I'm not necessarily a 10 either. So, you know, uh, could I stand to lose a few more pounds? Hell yeah. Can I stand to put on a little bit more muscle mass? Well, yeah, you know, that's, but, you know, mm. have I been a guest at conventions in Germany? Have I modeled for art? Have I had little roles in plays? Have I been paid to use my voice to record narrations? Nice. Yeah. I mean, so I, I, I do things. And while I may not have a Lambo out front, I do have a couple of cars. Uh, nice. While I may not have a mansion, um, mm, this looking looking at the back, it's kind of like it's not Dude, small. I am jealous of that fucking book, that wall of books. That's what I'm jealous of. Man, that's not only books. Lambos oh, sorry. And mansions and all that bullshit. I want that stuff. Oh, on the other side of this office wall is a complete wall filled with Japanese model kits. Nice. So some built, mostly not waiting to be built when I make the time to do so. Hopefully before the eyesight's gone. Although for right now, up close, I'm I'm real good. These are only for a distance. <laughs> Although I actually needed these when I was in the service, but I was still on an M60 uh, machine gun team in the service and shooting at targets at 600 plus yards and uh, hidden. So, uh, and that was without my glasses. So. I just aimed at the center of the dark blur and I hit what I was shooting at, but, but no, um, you know, what are we going to major as success when you, when you run into the, the, the feeling, you know, I'm almost content. I, I think I'm almost content that that's definitely a sign of success. And that's yes. also a big danger for a man. We mm. can't be content. Because we stop living, I think, when we when we get too content. That's where the Ben and Jerry's or something comes else, in. You know? Or that's yeah. where the Marquis de Sade comes in. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just go for the Ben and Jerry's. No, but you're right. Like, as you just mentioned, you've been to places. You do places. And I was hoping... I was so hoping that tweet of all my tweets would go like viral or whatever, or somebody mm -hmm. would jump on it. But a while back, I said, the global sexual marketplace does not exist. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it went under the radar because a lot of people advocate for that now. Oh, but Instagram and everything. Yes, 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 yes. But hear me out on this one. Instagram is still an app. Mm -hmm. So on that app, there are still boundaries to Instagram. There is still an outside of Instagram. Like you, Robert, just mentioned conventions. A convention is in and of itself a marketplace. When mm -hmm. Rob goes out to a bar, that bar is a marketplace. Mm -hmm. When I go out to one of my cities here or whatever, or when I go on Tinder, it is a marketplace. Now, Tinder is a huge marketplace, but it depends on the radius you put it. So that mileage for you is a marketplace. Mm -hmm. But all of that has turned into, no, everything's global. You will compete to the world. It's like, in, in some aspects, yes, but even in there, there is still subcategories but for all, one reason or another i think it's just marketing just for marketing sake we forgot about that and also dre asked a good question the shorter rob <laughs> could you give a brief introduction robert because i just thought you were an amazing guy with a great collection oh uh it's does the guy just want to know how big i am is this bumble or tinder now which by the way <laughs> is is now putting like you have to prove your height oh i looked yeah. at that that is an article from two years ago okay oh, and they so never went with it yeah we're recycling bullshit then right. oh, rob right. how do you always put that what is old is new again yeah it's it's the same old outrage it's just another fucking piece of outrage that's all it is mm. yeah uh, but how did you get into this space and 
what is your how did i get into this space um i was married a couple times divorced a couple times mm. uh first uh, first marriage high school sweetheart love of my life i thought mm. uh had two sons with her uh did all the things i was supposed to do sacrificed my future for her future with the promise that hey once she got through college and once she got that degree and she got her job as a teacher then you know it'd be my turn to pursue some of my dreams and you know be the responsible husband and father and all those all those things that a boy born in the late 60s was told this is how it works and this is how it did at one point in time um to varying degrees mm -hmm. um and of course all of that was wrong all of that was bullshit all of that so things that rob has talked about things that rollo has written about uh even things rich has written about um firsthand jane goodall out with the monkeys experience taught me yeah there is there that's accurate those numbers re reflect actual experiences um sec second time around things were very different um and in fact you know this you know had uh my paramour not gotten pregnant my second ex-wife would probably still be married to me oh but but uh <laughs> but we had a kid together and we were good but it's like this is how it's going to be and uh, uh you know i live by what i wanted to live by because i'd already been burnt once and uh but the paramour wanted a child and i was rather fond of her so i'm like well what's one more little kuzlin running around in the world so uh i have four sons total um two ex-wives i'm six foot two around i'm the shorter people. one so god damn it now you can lay that to rest you fuckers yeah. Jesus Christ, Robert's an go. actual chat. Three yeah. women, four kids, an empire, a house. With... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, I've been with uh, female executives who have flown me first class to Dallas, Texas to see some of my favorite bands in concert. I've had them fly me to Las Vegas to have sex with them on the strip with the curtains open and the lights of the Las Vegas shining down below me. Were they tens? No. They were 10 for me. That's it. And that's all that matters. You know, you know, like Bull Rush has said, if she gets my dick hard, she's a 10. Yeah. So there you have it. Can I so, just you know. say every 10? Okay. There's one thing that makes a 10 for me that is non, like non makeup wise. That's just thin. But even there, there is differences of opinion. Some like mm -hmm. them a bit more. I like them stick figure thin, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. The rest is mostly makeup. I mean, yeah, let's I, be honest. The rest is mostly makeup. I, I, I have like seen. Mine, yeah, I've, I like mine having some curves. I, I don't like them built like twelve-year-old little boys. But that's mm, no, that's no, no. yeah. So, but I mean, but no, I I get what you're saying about having a a healthy physique is nice. I I just like a little bit of a little bit of a curve, but you know, I, I'm not necessarily Rubenesque, but you know, just. Mm -hmm. You know, I know what you mean. Yeah, like, she normal. fills out a gown well. That that's fine. If she fills out my bed well, that's even better. So <laughs> the important part, right? There. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it works for me. What's in it for there me? It works. Hmm. Like, what can you imagine? A personal opinion, not guided by anybody else's influence. No way. I think you might have just defined mental point of origin, Jack. Have Holy I now? Shit. Again, have I again the guy in the beanie in the bathrobe at Sunday, Saturday morning at 6 a.m. holding a podcast with two older gentlemen talking about life? Have I figured it out? Really? I don't even have a supercar. <laughs> <laughs> I do, however, have three PSA 10 Pokemon cards, by the way, and one, two, three Lego ships. Bite me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got a uh, Wiz Comics number 25 from December 1941, first appearance of Captain Marvel Jr. 
Nice. So okay, never mind. He wins. <laughs> <laughs> but is it you graded? Really want to go head to head here, huh? All no, right. it, it it has not been graded yet because I periodically like to actually look through the book. So, hmm. like, is that a know. big thing in comic books, the graded versions, or is it just the existence of that one thing, like Superman number one or whatever? No, grading makes a difference. It's like uh, anything else. It it adds. I think far too much to the book, but if you're an, a collector, um, that's that's definitely a big thing. I mean, I, I know several collectors that right now they have, because modern comics are such trash, mm -hmm. uh, they have switched to not only pursuing certain rarer books, but books that are graded or books that have a certain pedigree as far as being a part of a uh, a well-known within the comic collecting community uh, being a part of someone's collection. Mm -hmm. So there are certain collectors who had collected books in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, what have you. Who... When Captain America was still about the American dream. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Dave Crippen, I think, is one of the names that, that comes to mind uh, at 12 o'clock at night. Um, but, yeah, they pursue these pedigree books or uh, certain key issues or books graded and are focusing on, on back issues. Hmm. So, um, which I'm completely fine with. Uh, you know, I to me, that's the good stuff anyway. Hmm. Um, I know that Jethro Johnson often teases that there are no good fantasy books written after 1980 and uh and that's partially him being hyperbolic but to kind of stir up people within the especially within the D, &D community but that's but, twitter uh, right yeah but but i mean there's definitely some kernels of truth to that as well so it's just a matter of uh you know it, it's like anything else uh, twitter especially it's it's more of the Howard Stern style of communication uh, and showmanship. So it's, it's outrage. And, and what's so funny to me is some of the most innocent or benign uh, stuff can generate outrage. Um, uh, Mackenzie, uh, Kenzie Puff posted mm, yeah. something about yet another redheaded character from a franchise is now being race swapped, um, you know, and, and eliminated. And so she, and also, you know, Tim Allen's not doing the voice of this iconic character that he's doing. So she made a comment about it and I agreed. It's like, yeah, you know, Hollywood hates redheads almost as much as they hate masculine male. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to her for an entire day. Several of the people that follow her, you know, we're liking the heck out of that thing. And then it's like the following day, the woke community noticed. And it's like, so the incel comments come on, you know, because I'm obviously an incel based on my Twitter feed, you know, posting toys and models and talking to guys in Japan in Japanese, some of whom are actually envious of my collection of Japanese anime goods, which nice. is, you know, when you make the guys that were there when the stuff was new, jealous, you're, you know, it wasn't a competition I set out to have, but you again, know, I'll take niche the win. market. Yeah, that as well is a marketplace. Yeah. So, but you know, so then all the insults started, and I'm just kind of like ignoring all of it because it's like you don't know me. I don't know you. You have a cartoon icon and not a real name. My, you know, my name is a name I've gotten paychecks for. So, and my image has generated income modeling for art. So. And my name's in books, uh, not nearly as many as some of the guys we hang out with. But, you know, it's like, it, it, you know, there's that old saying, does a lion care if the sheep calls him a name? It's no, like, I know, know what you mean. But real like, quick, real quick, by the way, Danny, yeah. thank you for becoming a member again. YouTube does that a lot, by the way, with the memberships where it's like, oh, no, this has been interrupted. I keep seeing that, like, has renewed his membership, renewed his membership. So that's a YouTube thing that we have to live with. But, like, in what circles do you linger, Robert, with the whole, like, you you were, you modeled for things. You mentioned you did narrations for things. 
I have the idea that I'm missing something and I have somebody on the show that I don't know enough of. It's like, do you know who this man is? And I'm sitting here like... He's the world's most interesting man, Jack. I think he is. He is. And so... There's there's one to, you know, take a page from him and put it in your own fucking playbook, you know, do a whole bunch of stuff just like what he's been doing. Yeah, I think I'm imminently boring. I am. I'm quite. <laughs> hey, I no seriously. I, I will grab, you know, uh, Jerry Rafferty's Baker Street and put it on the hi fi or play the CD even if I'm depending on which room I'm in and I'll open a bottle of bourbon and have a drink. I'll crack open a good book and I am fine. I am content. I, you know, um, I get a message late at night. Vince is doing a random show and he asked me to join. Hey, that's great. I get to hang out with Vince and some and TJ and those guys for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, it's Thursday night. <laughs> Rob's on. <laughs> I want, I wonder what he is going to be railing about this week. And it's, and it's always, you know, and it's always something good. And it's always something, you know, you can count on calling someone out on their BS. And the thing is, it's like, yeah, my life actually for all of its ups and downs and some of it makes very, uh, interesting fiction that's highly unbelievable um you know being being the bastard son of a whore is a lot more interesting in a book than in, in real life but you know some guys <laughs> that's actually their origin story um you know but it's you know my life is my life and could i have done more with it yes would i be richer now had i not been distracted by stupid things not least of which my fondness for women yes uh, would I be more famous and successful if I took more risk, was not distracted by women and wasn't so fiercely private? Hell yes. Because within certain fan communities, I'm known by different names and I keep those fan communities separate. My mother, my own mother has a Facebook account. One of my, uh, a brother-in-law found a picture of me posing, uh, at a modeling shoot in one of my costumes mm -hmm. and he's like oh my god this guy looks just like robert and showed it to my mother and they looked at it and they looked at it and they got on facebook and they looked at it and it's like it does it looks like robert but I, we, you know that that guy has a different name because in that shot i did it was a character name not me and uh and my mom told me about it and showed me the picture and it's like yeah that's a spitting image of me but Wow, yeah. gee, a doppelganger. <laughs> wow, it's like I guess everybody does have a twin. But <laughs> but my family doesn't need to be involved in that. Just like, right. you know, people strangers on YouTube or, or on Twitter don't necessarily need to be involved in my family life and that's and that's true for you know the the artists that I work with for various games, um the game companies I've done some work for um you know, various youtube channels whatever it's like i keep those circles separate and god i think it was what two three weeks ago rob you were talking about the fact about compartmentalizing that stuff mm -hmm. keeping keeping that stuff in your life separated and sorted out and i mean it wasn't you know any jordan peterson clean your room stuff which not to knock him or or, oh. or that because i mean there is some wisdom in that about you know cleaning up your own shit but, you know, keeping that stuff compartmentalized, not everyone needs to know everything about you. You know, right. it's like, so when someone wants me, you know, present your receipts, it's like, screw you. Fuck off. Who are yeah, you? Fuck Who are off. You? Who are you? you know, you want to see my receipts? I'll show you my receipts when you want to pay my bills. When you want to pay there my bills, I'll go. give you my receipts. You there can pick you up go. that tab. You're Rob is the only one who who has seen my quote unquote receipts. Yeah, and and this picture of mine now is a receipt mm -hmm. <laughs> because I always live stream with like hoodies and beanies and things like that. Do you know how cold it always is when you look like this? Nobody talks about that. Like, okay, I look great, but I am always cold. Always. Seriously, body fat has a purpose, and if if you have so little of it, you're always cold. It's like it's not fun. Mm -hmm. But you're right, Robert. Like, you want to keep things separate. I have the same thing with this online stuff. 
like the the people I do hang out with on a daily basis, they know. Other than that, it's like no. And a couple of them found me and misinterpreted things and are now spreading that and think I'm a raging misogynist. But I'm like, there's a reason I don't tell people shit. There's oh, a reason yeah. I don't tell family, same thing where it's like they want to know everything about you. And it's like, no, no, you don't have to. Mm. It, one Christmas card does not compare to knowing everything about my life. No. Like, like, fuck off. Well, Especially online now. Like, can we pay attention to what somebody is saying? Like, okay, like Rob, because of, not even because I wanted him to show receipts. It's more like, hey, I've got a date. Look at this. Mm. It was more like that. It was an actual genuine friendly conversation between somebody who I consider a far friend. Yeah, it wasn't Jack, you know, hey, brah, look at me. I'm banging nines and tens. I'm legit. I'm real. It's Because if he'd have done that, I'd have been like, dude, go fuck yourself, man. Mm -hmm. No, he's just like, dude, check her out. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, cool. Good one, Jack. Good mm -hmm. one. Oh, speaking about nines and tens, by the way, you remember the picture of me with the scruffy bird and the, the girl next to it, right? Yeah. Most of that was makeup on her side. When she yeah. took that off, she looked completely different. So just saying, because she looks great with the makeup on. Without makeup, it wasn't bad or anything, but it was different. But, well, and that's that's been my experience that, and I'm sure Robert can agree to this too. Mm. And and there's been dudes who've already done it. I know, I think Rolo did it at one point on Twitter. <laughs> they show like porn stars in makeup and then the next shot you know a side by side is them without makeup and in makeup man they are they're like eights nines and tens and then you take the makeup off and they're like fives mm -hmm. they're just average you know well, and then that's most like that. women yeah yeah there, there's you know yeah you get outside of porn even just go into mm -hmm. your standard industry you, you know the the big screen or even the little screen most of the actors and actresses, you take them off the stage makeup and all that, because even the guys in movies wear makeup, okay? And not just stuff to enhance, you know, to make, like make them look either younger or older, but they wear makeup too. And you, you wash that shit off, and they actually look pretty average. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, they, they would blend into a crowd for the majority of them. They'd blend right in. You'd never know. Oh, hey, that's so and so that was in this movie or whatever. You would have no idea because I've had that happen to me up in Park City. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where the celebrities go. They do a lot of crap up there. And the next thing I know, you know, I'm standing next to some dude and I'm just like, you know, barely look at him twice. And they're like, dude, you were standing next to Kevin Dillon. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was Kevin Dillon. <laughs> Who's oh, Kevin Dillon? Matt Dillon's younger brother, he played John Densmore in the movie The Doors. He was in Platoon and he was he's, in Platoon. He's in a, he's been in a lot of things. He was yeah. in Entourage too. Yeah. The the yeah. series that was like on HBO or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was my ex-wife that had pointed that out because she started flipping her shit. Mm -hmm. I'm standing next to this dude and he's talking to somebody, and, and I just said hey to him, and he said, Hey back, how you doing? type of thing. You know, just two guys talking for a minute and then he wandered off and it's my ex-wife's like oh my god do you know who that was i'm like some fucking dude i don't know <laughs> who kevin dillon and mm. i'm like kevin dillon like the kevin dillon from the doors kevin dillon and she's mm -hmm. like yeah i'm like huh didn't look like kevin dillon to me <laughs> well <laughs> you know li living here in makeup. yeah living here in indianapolis uh of course, we have the a little race that comes to town every May, right around my birthday, as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, there, there's lots of celebrities that come out for that, either to be participants uh, in it in some shape or form, parades and, and that sort of thing. And I can remember being a young boy running into a rather well-known actress from a uh, show in the 1980s called The Dukes of Hazard. Oh, Catherine really? Bach. Yeah, I remember her. Daisy yeah. Duke. Daisy Duke. And I remember running into her at the Speedway. And um, let's, she's still nice looking lady, um, but in regular clothes, not those Daisy Duke cutoffs. 
and without the makeup on, she looks a lot more like an ordinary woman you would see in a local Speedway bar or, uh, you know, some other kind of hangout in Indianapolis than, you know, oh, my God, Daisy and, Oh, Duke. my God, it's Daisy Duke. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and she had some makeup on, but she wasn't, you know, professional makeup. Yeah, she wasn't perfect TV lighting, TV, carrying with her. <laughs> with the, you know, with the shirt tied in the middle and the, and the short, short jean shorts. So, you know, wearing, you know, comfortable but normal clothes for, you know, May in Indiana. So, yeah. And there are lots and lots of actresses like that. I mean, one of the things they seem, uh, the paparazzi seem to love to do is, you know, here's a Charlize Theron with a Starbuck in her hand with no makeup on, looking like a bag lady. Uh, or, you know, Julia Roberts. Or pick, pick your starlet. Pick your flavor of the month Hollywood starlet. And they do. They, they look a lot more normal and a lot more ordinary and in some cases a whole lot more unattractive than yeah, they just do average yeah there was one celebrity i met dutch celebrity caris van houten she mm -hmm. played um what's her name in game of thrones funnily enough um she played the red lady in game of thrones oh uh, yeah the dutch yeah. actress Carissa. i met her i have her signature still by the way nice. She looked actually pretty the same. Yeah, she, she does. I've I've met her too. I don't. I didn't get her signature. I just I just chit chatted with her for a moment. But she's um, actually good looking in real life. Yeah, not she's, she's she, one. Yeah, not not an unattractive lady. But of course, yeah. she's Dutch. Yeah. So. <laughs> now, see, but if you'd have told me you'd met Rutger Howard, then I would have been impressed. I know. I would have loved to. It would have, my my dad the same by the way no that mm -hmm. would have been awesome he when did he die a year two years ago about a year or two yeah oh such a shame he was so good yeah, did I you i don't know if you're like into uh the the films of the uh, country of origin of the actor robert but have you seen the the heineken kidnapping uh i have not seen it in a long time uh, probably close to around when it came out what was that just uh god oh that's a long time ago yeah i i've seen part of it i've not seen it in its entirety but one one of the movies he did that i really liked and was one he did with verhoven was a uh, flesh and blood oh i haven't seen that yet yeah that one were... that one is kind of a red pill movie that is that is i if anyone's watching this is into the whole red pill manosphere whatever stuff watch flesh and blood that's okay i'll just say that and if you're not if you like medieval period piece kind of movies watch it because it's it's really good and i am it's just it's just very interesting it's very different and it's not a pretty movie but it's really well done and it's got some really interesting stuff going on. And I don't yeah. think it's a movie that could get made nowadays for a lot of different reasons, but Jennifer Jason Lee's in it as the, uh, the heroine. And uh, it's loosely based on some of the uh, um, John Hawkwood and uh, medieval mercenary in Italy uh during the various periods of fighting from you know the various city states and um anyway it's just a very interesting movie so i i recommend it to to anyone who likes rutger hauer or, or paul verhoven as a director 1985 like, yeah yeah i would like to actually see some of this uh, the the tv shows and stuff that he had done prior to becoming a you know, a well-known Hollywood actor. Cause I know like, there's a very famous series, uh, which is, yeah. And I have never, I've seen images from it, but I've never actually seen any episodes from it. So I have never seen it either, even though, no, it was just before my time. It was in the eighties. Mm -hmm. 
And like I was a '90s kid, I didn't start watching TV until I was what was I three or four, something like that. And then Flores wasn't on anymore. Um, what's the other one? The Kid in the Elevator. Mm-hmm. Is it called? No, it's not the Kid in the Elevator. Kruimeltje is another one, mm-hmm. uh, a Dutch series about a street kid. That was actually pretty wholesome, by the way. Uh, some. Uh, a kid who's homeless who finds a dog and they just do their thing. It's actually pretty wholesome. Mm. With Rutger Hauer, Derek, uh, the name of the one he did where the Nazis won the war and he's a cop in the 1960s. Uh, uh, I know that one too. I've It's been a long time since so I've seen that because I think that came out in like the late 80s, early 90s. Mm-hmm. It's based on a book, if I remember right. But it's, yeah, it's an alternate history where the uh, Germans win the war. I truly wonder what that would have been like, though. And I'm, oh, don't get me wrong, I'm not a sympathizer or anything. But it's like, have they lost when you look at the world now? Where it's like the, the, yeah, they the, actually have because Stalin won. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good one, Rob. That's a good one. That, I keep saying that. The, the uh, USSR didn't fall. It just moved. Mm-hmm. It just moved, man. It didn't fall. It moved. It just went global is all it did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Patton was right. Did you know at the end of the war, Patton said, we need to face Stalin. Everybody mm-hmm. ignored him. It's like, fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to get into it too much, but like in the Netherlands right now, it is getting so freaking weird. It is getting so weird with that QR pass and things like that. It's like, Oh well. Oh well. I what are you gonna are do? Very about... Strange all over. Well, uh, the thing is, like, I don't want to sound like a black pill doomer. I know Rob had his fun this past week with calling me a commie and all that. <laughs> but well, I see if, if the if the hat fits there, Castro. You know. Oh, That's we're gonna more. go. Well, we're okay. We're gonna go like that, Gavira. Fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> but. <clears throat> When it comes to like politics, I'm actually pretty black pilled. I see some guys on Twitter going like, "We're gonna fight the regime and we're gonna start our." I'm like, you know what, mate? You're gonna maintain that for like maybe a year or two, but then you have to go and get groceries. Then you go gonna go and have to get medicine. Then you're gonna go and have to get whatever. Now. Of course, the uh, food and all that, self-sufficiency, yes, that is possible. Absolutely. I'm not saying it's impossible, but they're going to make it very bloody hard. And if I know people, and I do, um, going from the statistics on how many people actually denied orders in the wars, you're going to be like 10% of the population Mm -hmm. who is actually going to go against it, and that will just fade out. Now, I'm not saying there aren't people who are going to resist, but this is not going to turn out well, is all I'm saying. Because it's not just the Netherlands who has this. This is France. This is Italy. This is the entirety of Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, Poland is now going against the European Union. But even then, it's like, yeah, but Poland gets 30 million or even billion. I'm not sure about that. I I forgot. In subsidies. Mm -hmm. So like Poland can say all at once. Where it's like, no, uh, local law stands above European law. Uh, The EU is just going to cut off resources. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, how long can you, how can, how long can you maintain your rebellion, sort of say? And otherwise, they're they're just going to flip out the guy who's in power right now. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where it was. Oh yeah, the the Rutger Hauer movie, Mm -hmm. where it's like Fatherland. Yeah, Fatherland. Okay, good. But it's like, how how much have we strayed away from a totalitarian regime which people fought so hard for to prevent? I mean, okay, we have our freedoms, in all honesty. Like, the, the guys in Auschwitz just can sit on their ass and watch Netflix. I mean, let's not, let's not forget about that. Mm-hmm. But living in a pod, eating your bugs doesn't sound too good either it's like know what i'm saying oh absolutely i mean i definitely have opinions about it but i, I know rob does as well and I'm, I'm interested in hearing 
his thoughts on the matter. I think I've talked a lot this episode that's, already anyway. That's going to be for another show for another time. All right. I mean, uh, I'm not. And, and you're as far as I'm concerned, and I'm not trying to speak out of turn here, but you're welcome to come back anytime, Robert. That's no, I appreciate that. Thank you. So that I would like to have that discussion, but not tonight since we are well past the halfway point. Mm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, because that uh, I could speak volumes and and it's not pretty. I'll mm -hmm. say that uh, it's just the way it is. This is a good point from Phil. And he's right. If the last election showed me anything, it was never to put stocks in politics again for the rest of my life. Just don't. Go on with your life. Hug your children. Love your wife. Eat your food. And go Eat about your, your day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because live your you life. can't change it. The only thing, the one thing I will say about, you know, since we're kind of going into politics just a little bit here. Yeah, just a bit. The one thing I will say for tonight is you cannot... You, you as a one voter, one person, you will not make one dent, one ripple, one drop in the ocean difference on the national level. Mm -hmm. You will not make one bit of difference on the state level, like the state of Utah for me. Okay. My vote mm -hmm. does not count. It does not mean shit. It doesn't matter on the county level. It doesn't matter on the city level. The only place that my vote counts when it comes to political decisions, seriously, is in my HOA, okay, which is the community I live in that has about, oh, it's about 100 homes, mm -hmm. okay, 100 homeowners. My vote counts there. So when they decide they want to enact a policy or change something up or, you know, raise the fines for dog shit or whatever it is they want to do, those I tend to pay attention to and I'll turn out because my vote actually matters there. Mm -hmm. I actually have a voice there. But that is the only place that I have found politically where I have any pull. Anything outside of that, I have no say and neither do any of you. Yeah. So, you know, jerking off about Biden or jerking off about Trump or Putin or whoever it is that you like to jerk off about, it, you're just jerking off. And that's all you're doing. And it's not going to change one bit of difference. That we went as full a, circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, not, we, we actually did just went full circle. As in, remember what I said about that global sexual marketplace not being real? Yeah. Things like that. Same it's as politics. Here, they go. globalized it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there you have it. Okay. So it doesn't matter, which is why I don't give a fuck. You know, this is yeah. this is a big part. You know, this is one small piece of the big puzzle of me that of why I don't care. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I look at the things that I have direct influence over, that I have a direct say over, that I have a direct impact in. And that that circle, like it or not, is woefully small. Mm -hmm. It's me. It's my immediate friends and family. It's the girls I date. And to a lesser degree, I can have a little bit of say with my coworkers and my boss. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, man, my whatever I think and whatever I say and do as far as the, the population at large, it doesn't mean shit. And so, fuck it. Why should I care and worry about it? People are going to do what they're going to do. And as long as they don't intrude on me directly, I don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, now if they're going to intrude on me directly, I have responses for that. And they're not, you know, they're they're not always legal. Mm -hmm. But I have responses for that. Right. They'll find out real fast and the hard way if that's the direction they want to go. But as long as they stay the fuck off my property and they're not directly inter interfering with me living the life the way I want to live it, I don't care what they do because it doesn't matter. So that's there's my one piece, my one well, thing for tonight at least. I will, two cents. I will my my three cents, and I will be brief and not TJ brief, but <laughs> genuinely brief. Um on a positive note, I am pleasantly surprised at the number of protests I've seen in Italy and other places when I see it. 
Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that it's as big as it is, even though there's a lot of indications that it's bigger than what's being shown. And that wouldn't surprise me. But regardless that it appears as big as it is, as frequently as it's becoming, I'm pleasantly surprised. Secondly, my political opinion from the time I was a teenager was one man, one vote is all fine and good. But if I'm one man, one vote, and a hundred dollars for your campaign, I'm more valuable than the guy who's one man, one vote. If I'm one man, one vote, and a thousand dollar donation to your campaign, I'm worth more than one man, one vote, and the guy who's donating a hundred dollars to somebody. And you can just take that on ad infinitum. Mm. And then thirdly, I'm getting too old to kneel. <laughs> I was never very good at it anyway. I do not take commands well, which made eight years in the military kind of interesting and, and an amusing challenge for me. Um, but I don't take orders well. I consider myself a free man, which means I have the luxury of saying no. I'm willing to face the consequences of that. I hope that that never changes in me, but I have no delusions that I'm some grand hero in a story and that I'm going to cause some magnificent change. I've accepted the fact that if push comes to shove, I will probably lose. I hope to go out on my feet with my principles intact, that my sons will remember me, maybe even avenge me, and that that will be it. It's not going to start some grand, glorious revolution that restores freedom and democracy or anything <laughs> like that. It's that, no, fine, I don't shop here. I can live with that. I bet you there's somewhere else I can shop. Fine. I won't oh, eat yeah. here. I bet you there's somewhere else I can eat. Fine. I won't do business here, but I bet you there's somewhere else or some other way I can do business. Making a living might be a little bit more challenging, but let's just say that not all the people I've known in my lifetime have worked in the light of day on government funded projects or things where all the beans are counted and things fall th through the cracks and happen in dark alleys and the world goes on and things happen. And if a man's smart enough, skilled at something willing to take certain risk, there's always a line of business for an enterprising resourceful person and uh so you know that's fine and i i accept that are you willing to lose yep i'm willing to lose are you willing to be the only when push comes to shove are you willing to be the only man that stands and be knocked down for doing so mm -hmm. i guess i will and uh you know we'll see what happens maybe it'll never be that bad maybe you know i've got skin in the game so yeah i have to care a little bit i've got four kids between the ages of six and well seven now and 31 so, you know, I've got four sons that I've tried to teach the best I could, both from my mistakes and from my successes. I love them dearly. Uh, I have three grandchildren, two grandsons that, again, trying to do what I can. So on one level, I've won. I've, re I've replicated myself in a couple of generations. So as a life form on a very basic level, I've succeeded. With multiple wives, by the way. <laughs> well, and some of them I weren't I wasn't married to all of them. So let's just leave it that. <laughs> so one wife, one wife, one god, I can understand. One wife. My, yes. <laughs> brilliant line, brilliant line. But no, so yeah, I've got skin in the game. So yeah, I do care and I do what I can, but I have no delusions that I'm making a difference on a macro level when I do have certain successes. Um, there's been some times that, you know, I've been surprised at the level of the success or the level of notoriety that comes with it. I'm thankful that most of that is confined to Europe, specifically to Germany and Australia or uh, Austria and Germany. Um, a little bit in the Netherlands, but very little bit. And hopefully mm. it'll stay that way because the, otherwise my secret will be out and you'll know who I am. Um, but 
no, but you know, so yeah, I'm surprised when it, when it works out and it's a little bit bigger than I thought it would be uh, or mm. something resonates more, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I lay my head down, you know, it's just me, uh, maybe a woman at my side, a dog at my side, sometimes both, who knows, What's the difference? In ah. night. <laughs> 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 depending hey you know closing time she needed a ride what can you say mm-hmm. we've all been there rob's <laughs> been there i know rob's been there oh yeah yeah but no, i have it's... one moped i am not proud of where it's like i need to beat watson she's in here mm-hmm. i can do it i was like fine yeah yeah but no, team so one for the team. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. You know, so, you know, you're you're with your you're with your friends. They're having some success. You're having some success. And one of you has to earn his blood wings that night. Oh, well, you you do it for your bros, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not a real man unless you have at least one you don't write home about. Yeah. So <laughs> Well, and well, I, know, I know exactly what Robert's talking about. He's doing a hat tip to the MC world, and it's like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but it just is what it is. So, you know, do I have a Lambo? No. Do I have receipts? Yeah. I'd be uh, honest. You know, I, I, I would rather be on Twitter posting toys. And talking well, to dudes in Japan about toys. I mean, I mean, real quick. But if you look at what's in that room, is yeah. that hot rod? By the way. Oh yeah, nice. The the Rodimus <sighs> Prime is actually in the other room at the moment. God but, damn! Uh, but just saying, everything that's in that room, you could buy a Lambo or two. That's just one Probably. wall. Mm-hmm. I've got three other walls. Jesus. And, you know, and that's, and plus the rest of the house. So, and it's a, um, let's see, I'll just do bathrooms. One, two, three, four, four and a half baths. And there are more bedrooms than bathrooms. And then there's also living rooms, dining rooms, and so forth. So, you know, is it a McMansion? No. Is it a pretty nice size American house? Yes, it is. Is it mostly filled with my stuff? Yes, it is. Did she say she wanted the rest of the house to look normal and, you know, I could have, you know, a room? A long time ago, she did. Is that the case? Oh, hell no. There are Dragon Lance, <laughs> there are frame Larry Elmore signed Dragon Lance prints hanging up in the front room uh, or in the living room in the front two rooms besides the shelves filled with books there are also shelves filled with board games so you know the loft looks like a japanese model store um and i could go on and on but it's just it's my stuff you know it's what i've invested my time and my money in. was it foolish should i have been more like aaron and lived a more spartan and frugal life yes flying spirit no I value what time I have left on this earth. I am not flying spirit. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's just not going to happen. Is spirit airlines that bad of an airline? Dude, any airline that you can fly like, yeah, I know. He sent me a bunch of bullshit <laughs> from him too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If ever if if you can get on an airplane and fly, you know, round trip for like a hundred bucks. That you might as well be put in a slingshot and catapulted across the country. All right. Now, if you want to be the money saver, and especially if you're a young man and you've got, you know, your whole life's possessions in a backpack, Spirit might be the airline for you when you're 21, mm-hmm. okay, or 18. And you want to do the, well, I got to fly from Frisco to New York to catch a, a flight across the pond so that I can backpack across Europe and sleep on the ground and, and stay in hostels. But when you get to my age, I want to fly in comfort. I want to fly first class, which mm-hmm. spirit doesn't have. Okay. I don't want to sleep in the dirt on the fucking ground. Mm-hmm. I don't want to sleep in a hostel where I'm bunking with like 12 other assholes. I Who want to smell own- like assholes. Thank you. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't want to smell their stench. 
I don't want to smell that they haven't wiped their ass in three days and that they don't know what deodorant is. No. I want to sleep in a decent bed, just like with my house right now. When I was dating my ex-girlfriend, who's 20 years younger, she was going through this period of time where she was like, oh, I want to get a tiny house and be able to take it with us and travel the country. And I'm like, you're out of your fucking mind. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, no, you know, I like my bed. It's like when I went to the village by the sea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Vince spared no expense when it came to the Airbnb we had. It was it was phenomenal. Okay. Everything was great. The bed was fantastic, but you know what? It's not my bed. Mm -hmm. And so I, I about halfway through the trip, about three, four days in, I was like, I miss my fucking bed, mm -hmm. you know, because it's my bed and it's, it's what I wanted. And so when I got home, it was like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm home. You know, I'm back to my bed. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. And then that's, that's one of the things that while, yeah, I, I, I can agree with Aaron to up to a point with minimalism that, yeah, there's certain things because, you know, if you've got to move, you got to pack all that stuff up. You got to take it with you. You got to have space to have it, which means you're spending more money, yada, yada, yada. But at the same time, do you do you want to live or do you just want to exist and get by? Because in a lot of ways, a lot of real hardcore minimalism is just existing and getting by. Mm -hmm. You might as well be in a pod eating bugs. Yeah. You know, you really, you know, and that's that's what I look at. Now, some people, that's the way they can, you know, they can manage that and that's their thing. Me, I like to have some creature comforts. I like I like a heated house. I like air conditioning. I like my soft bed. I like good audio sound, so I pay for good headphones. I like when I watch movies on my TV. I got a decent TV, so it's really crystal clear. All that kind of stuff. You, you pick and choose your battles. You pick and choose the things you want because at the end of the day, you can't take any of it with you. Hmm. You know, Not one stick of it's going with you when you go bye-bye. So you might as well fucking enjoy your life. Whether you're going to, you know, drive Lambos, if that's your thing. If you, I, I would love to drive a Lambo. I don't want to own a Lambo. Exactly. Exactly. I have looked at the expense costs of an oh, Estee yeah. Martin. Holy well, shit. You know, never mind the sticker price. Whether mm -hmm. you're buying new or used, it's, it's kind of irrelevant there. I, I could care less about the sticker price. Everybody, you know, oh, well, Lambos cost this and an Austin Martin costs that and a Ferrari is this and, you know, a Lotus or whatever it is, is that. And it's like, yeah, but how much does it cost to insure one of those things? Mm -hmm. How much does it cost when you need to get the oil changed? How much does it cost when you need to change the tires? How much does it cost to fill that fucker up with gas? How much is it going to cost for you to get it tuned up? or to replace the blinker when the fucker goes out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I can just pay for a new light bulb. Uh, no, dude, you're going to be paying for a whole assembly. That's yeah. you know, on a luxury car and exotic like that. You're looking at a couple thousand dollars oh, yeah. for a fucking headlight. Well, hmm. yeah, because you can't change it yourself because no. the special Lamborghini certified tools you need to do it with. Right. You can't own. Yeah, you you have to be a Lamborghini certified technician. Mm -hmm. And so you can't just buy the tools down at your local hardware store. You got to go to school and you got to get certified by Lamborghini in order to have those tools. Yeah. So you're going to be taking that vehicle in to get it serviced. You're not going to service it yourself. I mean, you may change the oil and that's about it. Okay. And then you void the fucking warranty if you do. Yes. All right. And with the, you know, with everyone talking about the sky is falling and we have the coming apocalypse. Uh, do you think there's going to be guys around to tune up your Lamborghini? Mm. Really? You know, uh, come on. And, and honestly, look. if I'm going to spend the money on the car, I would either rather get my first car again, which was a 1970 Pontiac Firebird 350. Nice. Or a 1969 or 70 Dodge Charger. Ooh, okay. I mean, if I'm going to spend the money on right. the car, right. I'm going to do that. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to get a 
a sport utility vehicle and live out in the mountain somewhere. It's which who knows? I may be. I only say I live in Indiana. I may have, right. you yeah. could be living anywhere in the country or in the world for that matter. Right. So, but yeah, I'm certain cars. Yeah. I would, I would love to drive an old bond Aston Martin. There are some nice BMWs I've seen Lambos, Ferraris, you know, whatever. It's just, I, I'm not going to get it enough out of that. You know, it's just, I'm not, you're not, you're really not. And Hey, before we wrap it up, Jack, um, mm -hmm. I had a guy who was, he's, he's on, I don't know if he's in the chat tonight. He might be, but he was definitely in the chat last week and he, he was asking some questions of both of us. And, uh, cause we were kind of talking about abundance mindset and he was asking some questions. Well, we kind of wrapped it up pretty quick. And so he had a little more that he wanted to know. And so he private messaged me on Twitter mm -hmm. and, I, and what he said was actually pretty thought provoking. You know, he, he gave me some pretty detailed stuff here and he was, you know, really kindly asking my opinion about it. And, uh, I wanted to share it here, uh, whether he's here or not, I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming he probably is, whether he's lurking or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to out him, uh, unless he wants to out himself and that's fine if he does. But I do want to go over it, and then I want to. I want your take, Jack. I, Robert, I would like your take on this as well. Okay. But he starts off, and uh, he said, you know, it was cool being in touch on Red Evening. Uh, we were talking about abundance mindset. The wrap-up snuck up fast, and I was hoping to run a question by you on this, if you don't mind. And I said, fine, you know, let's go ahead. And he goes, it was some good discussion. You said where you are, it's pretty much 50-50 men to women everywhere you go. And then he goes on, I'm tempted to wonder that for any abundance mentality with women that you'll even believe yourself, you have to live in an area where everywhere you go is at least 50-50 men to women. And then he goes on, a friend of mine was talking about how everything's social in their area, it's 80% dudes showing up. You go to bars and clubs, it's 80% dudes. You go to meetups. It's 80% dudes. You go to singles mixers. It's 80% dudes. You try to join co-ed sports leagues and it's 80% dudes. And the friend said to him, this is unsustainable. And then he goes on. There was a 20 to 30 age singles meetup in my town recently with 86 RSVPs. And I could count the women on one hand. I feel like you can't just wake up one day and lie to yourself. Well, I do, after all, live in an abundance with women. And then he goes on and he says, can you tell me where I think I like I sound wrong here? And then he goes on and just says, you know, hey, I'd be cool if you would bring this up on Red Evening and ask, you know, the, the panel about it. He's puzzled about a guy being told to tell himself that he lives in abundance with women where everywhere he goes – He's one of 80 dudes maybe with maybe 10 to 20 girls around, and he's not being deluded, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, since he brought that up, um, I want to give my take a few things about it, and then, like I said, I want you guys to give your takes too. So first of all, I don't want to sound um, dismissive or flippant with what I'm going to say. I want to preface it with that, okay? Because I, I do understand, because I've been to different bars, different uh, venues, uh, different meetups. Uh, Robert, you might remember a period of time back in the 80s and the 90s, probably more in the 90s. You may have not been a part of it, um, but do you remember a thing called um, speed dating? Yes, very much so. Speed dating is where men and women got together and you had like five minutes and they would – because you'd meet up in real life. It was like a meetup. Everybody would show up at a, at a venue and you'd put on a stupid fucking name tag and you'd have like a little flash card that would – you have some questions that you would ask. You would get to sit down with like you know Lucy or Beverly or whatever the fuck her name was 
and you had five minutes for you two to kind of talk to each other. And then the host, if you will, or the organization that was putting on the speed dating would tell you time's up. And then you got to rotate to the next person. And this would go on pretty much until the event was over, which was about an hour or maybe a little more. Um, and uh, basically, I remember going to a couple of these and there was seriously like, there was like 60, 70 guys there and there was like seriously like 10 women, okay? Same with some of the bars I've been to. I've been to bars where it was a sausage fest. So I understand, and especially when you uh, are seeing it day in and day out, it's hard to have an abundance mindset. I'll, I'll 100% agree, uh, agree with you on that one. That being said, this is nothing new. If you ever read the book, The Age of the Bachelor, which is pretty dry, really. However, The Age of the Bachelor talked about the turn of the century, like the late 1800s up to about 1910, 1920. All of the bullshit that we're seeing today, other than social media, the technology obviously didn't exist, but a lot of the same issues that we deal with today, they were dealing with over 100 years ago. In fact, there were times when I was reading it that it, it felt like it was written today. Like, oh shit, you know, and yet the book was written back in the 80s. Okay, the 1980s. When it came to single men that lived in areas where they were the larger population than women, what to do? They moved. They migrated. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is the answer, unfortunately. And that, I don't mean to sound dismissive or flippant, and I'm not saying it's an easy answer because, hey, money, jobs, all of that, I get it. But that's what guys do. They migrate. You go from an area that's heavily populated with men where it's 10 to 1 ratio or whatever it may be, whether it's you drive to a different area just to visit and socialize and that's where you hang out. When I was with Vince and the guys in Ocean City and in New Jersey itself, I didn't see a whole lot of decent looking women. But when we were in Philadelphia, it's a college town. And in Utah, we have a lot of college towns. Okay. In fact, technically the area I live in is a college town. And so maybe it's time to do a little bit of reconnaissance and if it's if it's really that bad where you live maybe you need to start thinking about moving i'm just saying you know and i'm not trying to be dismissive or flippant but the only easy answer i can see if if it seriously is that big of a skewed ratio is find college towns either near you or somewhere else you would like to live and maybe start socking money away so that you can up and move especially if you are single and you're a younger man, especially. And even if you're not, even if you're older, fuck it, you can still move. I mean, hell, I'm going to go to Texas here eventually. So why not go to where you're treated best? But that's my, that's my advice, I guess. And, and over a hundred years ago, that's what guys were doing and they're still doing it. Mm -hmm. Most of the PUA guys that are actually half serious, if they live in a small town where everybody knows your name type of thing, they can't, you know, pick up chicks because everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. They move to the bigger cities. They move out of wherever they're at. They move towards more, you know, I hate to say it, but liberal areas where there's a lot more women. So, but that's that the thing I would say. Robert, your take? Yeah, I would definitely say that and if you can't do that on a on a major scale right away then hunt in different areas i mean that's hunt it. outside of where your cave is i mean and whether that's say you live in indianapolis and you drive up to chicago or you drive over to columbus or you head over to st louis you know whatever you need to do but obviously in, a, in any fairly decent sized city there is a place where females congregate, especially single females or females who want you to think they're single. 
which I mean, which ultimately ends up being the same thing. I mean, I know from my own personal experiences with concerts, most of the bands I tend to like anyway, even to this day, you know, most of the audience is going to be dudes. It's just how it is. And I'm fine with that. But I know Rob has heard the story and I'll make it real quick uh, because of the hour. Um, I took my three older boys to see Saxon and UFO in concert. I'm right up at the stage with Saxon and UFO, which is like a dream of mine from like the seventies and the eighties for, for, for both of these bands. My eldest son really into music is right up front with me. Uh, in fact, Biff Byford of Saxon, the lead singer ended up wearing my oldest son's denim jacket during denim and leather and autographed the interior of it before giving it back to him. All right. My second son, the one who looks the most like a younger, thinner, more muscular version of me, lean muscle mass version of me, um, is in the back with all the girlfriends and the wives drinking and getting phone numbers. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, it was no, not. You had the better seat in the house, really. <laughs> well, for, for what you wanted. For me, yeah, I was, I when you. I go to concerts, I don't care. You can be a 10. I'm here because of the band i'm here because music, oh there's because... always one chick at a concert who's there for the attention of the crowd just say yeah always one yeah there's always one who's dancing alone and bloody yeah. well knows all eyes are on her yeah but no nah, and usually she's bumping her drunk ass into me and i'm like lady i'm here for the music not for you so you know unless you're gonna drop down now and take care of me leave me alone and let me watch the fucking band so but uh, yeah, you just got to you've got to widen your hunting pattern. And if that eventually means that you relocate to more fertile hunting grounds, then do it. But you've got to have a bigger city near you that has, you know, in the case of Indy, a broad ripple or a downtown that, you know, that's where all the bars are and where all the girls are or, or is near the colleges, you know. So whatever that's that's basic you know, predator 101 for any hunter, you know, if you're hunting toys, you don't go to the shop that all the other scalpers go to, you go somewhere else or you hunt in a pack. So you, you need to rethink your strategies. And it's the same way with opportunities for meeting women. I mean, I, I hate to be that kind of crass and talk in such animalistic terms, but that's it, it, what it is. I hate to tell you, you know, human beings are animals. Homo oh, sapiens yeah. sapiens are in the same freaking, you know, family I mean, with, I think, what is it? 33 chromosomes separate us from like chimps and bonobos or something like that. I mean, we're the only animal like so focused on its own extinction, but Hey, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, we're animals. We have things that worked for our ancestors. There's a reason you actually exist. It may not have been your dad, but whoever your biological father was, he was successful in getting you. So learn from the past. Look at how this works. Think about it in terms of the hunt. It's like, what do you got to do? Well, if I'm hunting for deer and there are no deer in the middle of downtown Indianapolis, maybe I ought to go where the deer is. And I know it sounds easy and it's, and I'm being crude and a little bit crass and, and harsh, but what Rob said is right. And it may ultimately lead that you have to relocate completely. Yep. But for the moment, just widen your search, widen your hunting grounds, hunt somewhere other than where you live. I'm glad you made it too, Timius. I only have one thing to add to that. Otherwise I 100% agree, but I'm just saying not all men are created equal. And you don't have to outrun the bear. You just have to outrun your friend. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do. If you go out, make sure you are at least the best. If no, wait, make sure you're at least dressed nicer than 10 than 80% out there, if not the best dressed. And that's not hard. Oh no. That is no, no, no. The average looking motherfucker is dressed like shit. So yeah. dress the best you can. Look the best you can. Smell the best you can. Just saying, get a, uh, get a, get a uh, 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 cologne. That's the word I was looking for. Get a cologne, and just be the best version you can be. If you look, if you look at the average man, even woman, the, the average human being, 
just shit. Yeah. It's just absolute horse crock. It's like they don't take care of themselves. They don't care whatever. If you go out there and you look the best you can, you can, like a running your friend, not the bear, you'll be fine. Do that plus get better hunting grounds. You got this. Be charming. Be funny. Go look up old movies. Yeah. Know some witty jokes. Just don't be a moron. You'll be fine. With that, I'm going to wrap this up. <laughs> because I still have to work today. Guys, if you want to learn to uh, properly exercise, you can do that here for free. I videotaped or I made videos on the main exercises, squat, bench, deadlift, shoulder press, dips, and pull-ups. You can learn that here for free. Everything Rob is Rob says. .net. Link to the audiobooks are also in the chat or in the description, actually. But just plugging it anyway, the Fifty Shades of Game audiobook, because not only Robert, but I as well have done some narrations. These were for Troy Francis, the man himself, speaking about going out and learning to approach and things like that. Other than that, leave a like, comment down below what you thought of this show. And if you want to support the channel, click the join button as Danny did again today. Robert, where can people find you? Uh, Robert Kuzland on Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. Although most of my content on YouTube is only there briefly because I do random live stuff where I illegally play music, comment, and then remove it before YouTube does. Nice. Rob, did I miss anything? No, I think you got it. Uh, real quick, Jack, did you get that cologne we talked about? Not yet, but I will. Let me be. I have I have three bottles where it's like I don't need a fourth. <laughs> Bullshit. Every oh. Dude, I have like six bottles, and you know what? With the exception of one, every other one of them. Well, no, I take that back. Two of them I bought. The rest can were I, me no, by no, no, Real quick, real quick. Can I just say, when the majority of chicks doesn't even notice? Oh, they can go always notice. Oh, yeah. Were you the one who said covert contract? Ah, uh, whatever. Ah, uh, take us out. Notice, dude. Uh, yeah, 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 guys, don't, you know, don't take any wooden nickels. Yeah, see? Yeah, dot scenes. Yeah. <laughs>